Hi everyone, welcome back to the Rummage Workshop. I am so excited for this week's project. I found this water damaged cornhole set at a thrift store for $19. This thing is unusable in its current state. The surface is beginning to warp and the top layer of veneer is peeling away. I know that with a little love, this set can make it for many, many seasons to come. So let's dive right in. I had way too much fun peeling up all the veneer off this first board. I got off all that I could by hand, then pulled out a paint scraper to get the rest up. The second board definitely wasn't as water damaged as the other one, which is great, except it's gonna mean that this veneer is gonna be a lot harder to get up. And it's still damaged enough that I do need to pull all of it up because it will affect my finish down the line. After trying to remove it with a paint scraper, I grabbed a wet towel and set it over the top for a few hours to hopefully loosen up the glue a bit. While I was waiting, I set to work on making repairs on the other board. I started by removing the legs to make it easier to sand them down later. Then I pulled away some of the base layer that had water damage. I want to peel this up now rather than letting it affect my finish down the line. After that, I mixed up a batch of Bondo to repair the damaged areas. I framed the areas with some tape to make it easier to form crisp lines and edges. I then let that cure for several hours and then set my attention back on that stubborn veneer. Even after soaking it for an hour, the veneer was still not budging, so I pulled out my iron to help loosen it up even more. I've seen people use heat guns for this same thing and it seems to work really, really well. After this project, I think it's definitely time that I invest in one. <laughs> This was definitely slow going. I just kept applying the iron section by section and then used my paint scraper to pry it up. It took me a full hour to get enough of the veneer removed that I could just sand away the remainder. Bondo is now set, so I load up my sander with 150 grit sandpaper and leveled everything out. Then I sanded down the sides of the boards and found this lovely pine wood underneath. I'm gonna find a way to leave this exposed in the final design. I then made some final finishing patches to the sides and took 220 grit sandpaper to give everything a final pass to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. Finally, I wiped everything down with warm water and Dawn dish soap to remove any sanding dust and grime. We're finally prepped and ready to paint. I'm taping off the sides of the board because I'm gonna be leaving that wood exposed and then I'm gonna seal them with poly later. Next, I seal everything up with Zinzer Ben shellac based primer. Zinzer Ben is actually the only primer I've ever used. It's the one that all the people I follow suggest, and so I actually haven't even tried anything different. I would be curious to hear what your favorite primers are in the comments. Primer prevents tannins from bleeding through our final finish, and it'll give us a single substrate to paint over. That way, everything will have a similar texture and sheen in the end. Once that layer of primer dries, I then take 220 grit sandpaper to smooth everything out, then roll on another layer. 
I'm going to be using up some leftover paint on this project. I always have tons of greens laying around. It's either green or black for me. I feel like that's all I paint things in. Uh, but I did have to go to the Home Depot to fill out the orange and pink color palette that I'm doing for the other board. I just got a few of the sample cups made up, which worked really, really well and was really cost effective. Now it's time to roll on the base colors. This is gonna be what peeks through the tape lines when I pull it up. I'm gonna be doing a pale green on this board and then a baby pink on the other board. So each board is gonna have like a different theme. I'm using up all my green colors on this board and I'm thinking of maybe doing a balance of blues as well. And then the pink board is gonna have pinks and then oranges as well. Here are a few rules to get the perfect tape lines and to make your geometric designs look visually interesting and balanced every time. After laying your tape, press it down firmly to create friction and activate the adhesive. Lay all of your tape lines at an angle. Straight lines create visual division. Your angles should go in all directions. It can start to look a little funky if all your lines are pointing up or pointing down. Try not to match up points. Intersect your lines in the middle or just off center so that you aren't just creating triangle after triangle. Finally, seal the edges of your tape with a base color or a clear top coat. This will give you those oh so satisfying crisp. Now we get to start painting. I start by sealing the edges of the tape with clear coat. I use Varathane water-based poly for this. Once that dried, I started adding in my colors. This first panel is a balance of pinks and orange tones. I tend to keep the design inside of my house very neutral, but outside the rules don't apply. <laughs> I love things to be playful with lots of color and that's what I'm going for with these. I want it to be really fun. When painting anything by hand, be sure to use a high quality paintbrush. I use Zebra's round brush for this whole project with great results. This other panel is gonna be all greens because I have so many greens left in my stock of leftover paint. To make the paint look balanced, be sure to not place the same color right next to each other and don't be afraid to switch things up if they're not working. For example, the champagne gold color that I started with ended up making this kind of look like camo, which was definitely not what I was going for, so I pulled out a blue paint. And I'm so glad that I did because I love how the colors ended up balancing out. And now it's time for my favorite part, pulling up the tape to see the final design. After giving the surface a light sand with a 220 grit sanding sponge, I rolled on four layers of water-based poly and a satin sheen to the tops, sides, and the legs. I allowed each layer to dry for around 90 minutes, sanding between each pass so that the final finish is water resistant, durable, and buttery smooth. The bags that came with this set were mildewed and they smelled so bad and they made your hands smell bad. So <laughs> I ordered some new bags from Amazon that match our new paint job as well. Let me remind you of what this set looked like before. It was unusable in its current state and headed for the landfill. With a little elbow grease and leftover paint, this set looks amazing and is ready for many summer seasons to come. This is one of my favorite projects to date. Not only did it give me a creative recharge, but my husband and I played game after game on this set this weekend and we had way too much fun. I linked a plain cornhole set in the description box below just in case you weren't able to find a trashed one at the thrift store but i highly recommend doing this project thank you guys for following along i'll see you soon for another transformation from the rummage workshop <laughs>